Alright guys, welcome back and in this tutorial I want to talk to you about something called threading. So first of all, let's go ahead and understand what a thread is and why they are useful. So up to now, we've been building some very simple programs and you learn that pretty much building a program is kind of like giving your computer a set of instructions. We need to give it a nice logical order to follow, follow step one, then two, then three, that's pretty much what writing code is all about giving your computer some instructions to follow now sometimes it's useful to break up a single program and have it do multiple things at a time now I want to warn you guys most of the time this isn't a good idea because like whenever you're making a calculation you just can't like add the numbers or divide them or do whatever you want in any order else you're gonna get a bad result you need to follow a specific order so most of the time you don't want to use threads and your program is gonna run fine so when would building a program that does multiple things at once be beneficial well one of the most common examples whenever I teach threads is whenever you're making a messenger program what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna build two different programs that run at a time one of them is gonna be responsible for sending messages and one of them is gonna be responsible for listening for messages so whenever you're talking with someone like a instant messenger it doesn't matter when they send the message or, or excuse me when you send your message or when you receive a message um, you know you don't have to like wait for them to send a message before you can start typing so what you would want to do is you would want to build two different objects and one is responsible for sending out and one is responsible for receiving or listening and uh, it builds a really cool like a chat or Skype or instant messenger application so let me go ahead and show you guys how to do that right now so the first thing we need to do is import threading and what this does is it's a class that what we're gonna do is we're gonna make anything like a Bucky's messenger and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna inherit from this class so remember anything you put in here is the parent class that you inherit from so now any object that we create that's Bucky's messenger we get a bunch of cool built-in thread functions so the one function that we need to have is def run now you see it automatically popped up because this isn't just a uh, you know a name that I'm picking off the top of my head this is a very specific name that we need to have just um, kind of special to threads so it means something special to threads basically whenever we create a thread it's gonna call this run function simple enough so now let's go ahead and just write some code in it so just for a simple demonstration I mean typically what you'd want to do is make a complex program responsible for like sending messages every I don't know like you can do it like once a second maybe but for now I'm just gonna loop something ten times to show you guys it's a really good demonstration of how exactly this threads gonna work so for actually I don't even know if I taught you guys this so you know before whenever I was making a for loop and I put like for x in range 10 or for tuna in range 10 well that tuna or x variable is equal to numbers 1 2 3 4 all the way up to well it's either 9 or 10 or whatever however many times you want to loop so you can use that variable and print it out or use it in a calculation or something but sometimes we just want to loop 10 times and we really don't care what number we're on or that variable at all so what you can do when you don't really want to use that variable or that value you can just put an underscore right there and that's the kind of convention it pretty much is saying okay I want to loop 10 times don't really care about the variable so I'm just gonna use an underscore in place of it so that's what that means you know just kind of Python convention so what do I want to do 10 times well the cool thing whenever we inherited a bunch of stuff from this thread class or threading is actually let me type it out because it's kinda current thread probably should move my cursor out of the way get name now what we can do is one of the built-in things is we can give every thread a name 
So it's one of the default properties with a thread. So all I want to do is I'm going to make two different threads with two different names and I'm just going to print out their name. However, it acts really cool. It's not just like printing something out on the screen 10 times. So uh, I'll show you guys how cool it is right now. So for our messenger, this is all we have. That's all we need. What we did is we now have this class right here, but it can be threaded. And what this means is you can have multiple objects from this class running at the same exact time. You don't need um, to wait for one to get done to start the next one. So let's go ahead and actually create one. So I'll name one X and this is just going to be equal to Bucky's messenger. And remember, one of the built-in properties or the default properties for a thread is we can give it a name. So I'm going to set this name equal to, and this is just an example, send out messages. So we'll say that this is what this thread would be responsible for. So now let me go ahead and make another run real quick. And in real life, what this would be is instead of just giving it a name, you would actually, you know, add functionality to like receive messages. So now we have two threads right there. And check this out. Right now you're looking at this and said, okay, there's only one function in here called run. So you're probably going to do something like x run, but that's not the case. Whenever you create a thread, what you want to do is you want to call the start function on that thread. So x start and y start. And even though that this is kind of, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense at first, whenever you call the start function, what it does is it goes to that class and it looks for a function called run. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but that's how it works. So start kicks off a thread. Now, how is this different than any normal function? Well, check this out. Actually, you can kind of see it here, but let me run it one more time. Just a, there we go. That's a better example. So before, whenever we created objects, what happened is our programs run from top to bottom. So it ran this line, it finished, and then it went on this line, it finished, went on the list line. And what this line does is, it's, is it creates a thread with the name send out messages and it loops through it 10 times. So before, what would happen is this would print send out messages 10 times and it once it was finished, it would move on to the next line. But check this out. Send, 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 receive, send, receive, send, receive. Why are they all jumbled together? Well, that's the cool thing about threads. With threads, you don't need to wait for this to finish before moving on to the next line. With threads, what your program is going to do is it's going to say, okay, this is a thread and I'm going to start it off. In other words, I'm going to call run. And as soon as I'm done, before this is even done, I'm just going to go on to the next line and do whatever it tells me to. So again, eventually what we have for a brief period of time is both of these things running at the exact same time. So now our computer program is, well, a lot more powerful and a lot more faster or a lot faster, however the heck you say it. So that is how in one instance you would utilize threads to make a messenger program. And again, just warning you guys, you don't want to use threads with everything. Even though it speeds up your program, this would be really awful in a calculation. So say you're like averaging a bunch of numbers. Well, you need to add all those numbers together before you do your division. So if you're like, okay, add and try to divide at the same time, you're going to get one, you know, messed up answer. So you wouldn't want to do it in that case scenario. But for programs that really don't depend on something else to happen and can run concurrently or at the same time, threads are an awesome feature to have. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and, uh, well, I'll see you later.